So today we're looking at Google optimization. And particularly we're going to look at nine areas where if you're an intermediate, so you've already got started with Google My Business, but you want to grow, maybe get into that three pack, then these are nine areas, nine tips, nine tricks that are gonna really help you to gain gravity and momentum when it comes to your business listing. And also stick around because at the end of the video, I've got a really cool bonus that if you've perhaps just got yourself into a bit of a mess, it's gonna help you start again so you can get that traction back very, very quickly. Hi, I'm Zane from Zanet Design and I help small businesses and entrepreneurs grow their business on local SEO searches. So by using Google My Business, by using my 20 years of experience as a web designer, these little courses and tricks are going to help you to gain traction for your business. So make sure you subscribe down below, make sure that you visit me on a regular basis because I keep my videos up to date with the very latest information you need to benefit your business. So let's take this uh, main section we're going to look at then today, and that's really what tips can we use to help intermediates or those that have already started and registered their Google My Business listing, what can we do to really help you grow your business? And maybe even to, by the end of these video uh, ideas or these tips I give you, maybe at the end of it, you may even be able to come up in that local three pack uh, just to explain the three pack is where you'll do a search for something that's local and in that search results it will show the top three businesses and as you may have already known that if you can get your business appearing in the top three then there's huge amount of inquiries and traffic coming your way so that's what most google my business listings are aiming for that's what we're going to try and accomplish by means of these nine suggestions and tips so let's take the very first one tip number one check your branding. Now I had a video that showed some tips of how you can check your branding and I'll put a, a link to that video now which you can go to. But in effect, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get people either talking about you, you're trying to get them to link to you, but you're also trying to see how you appear in other listings and indexes. So as much as Google My Business is an important index to get shown in, Google My Business itself bases its authority of your business and branding on what it sees on the web. So on the web, it looks at your website, it looks at links to your website, it looks at all various uh, suggestions and areas to see what type of authority does your branding have. And so in this video, you'll see that it shows you ways in which you can check to see what your listing is like in, say, um, Facebook, or it could be how it's viewed in Yahoo or Bing even. Those are the types of, uh, types of areas it's going to look at. Uh, how do you get seen by Yelp or yell.com? Those things, those reviews, those photos are all going to have an impact on how Google My Business views you. So your branding, point number one, is essential. So point number two, grow your domain authority. So what do we mean by this? Well, your website, probably uh, you have a name for it. So maybe it's a, a .co.uk or a .com. And where people go to to your website, so this is separate to your Google My Business account, where they go for your website, your domain will have an authority. And that authority is down to how Google views it. It'll also be based on how other authoritative websites link to it. And it will almost have like a domain score. You can check that domain score out for your page rank in effect, you can check your domain rank as well. And if you have an authoritative domain and you're linking through to Google My Business and Google My Business is linking back to you, that kind of in itself tells Google that you're an authority. So it increases your brand awareness. It also increases how Google presents you. So if you want to get into the three pack, then you need to concentrate not just only on your Google My Business uh, listing, but also on your domain authority. What can you do to improve your domain authority? Well, you can blog on a regular basis. You can uh, make sure you've got good links coming in because you've written well-written articles. So blogging is important. You can use social media such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter 
to again make people aware of, of point number one, your branding authority, and point number two, your authority when it comes to your domain name. So that's your your domain name is your .co.uk. So for example, in my website, my domain name is zanat.co.uk. And that is where I'm building my authority. So not only will you see videos like this on YouTube, but also you'll see a lot of articles written that will help you also on my website. And that's number two then, building your domain authority. So for point number three, this is one that can often be missed and it's a really easy one. But if you go to Google and then you then see a list of all these great businesses, say you're looking for a plumber and you just want to contact one or two immediately there and then, you don't want to pick up the phone, you don't want to go through to the website and find where their contact details are. You just want to ask for a quote. Well, Google My Business provides a quote button where you can add this button and get an instant quote. How does it work? Well, this is point number three, add a quote button. The way it works is you have to download an app to your phone and then the phone has to be linked up into the Google My Business listing. And when the two are talking to each other, then people can instantly contact you on your phone. So they might just say, how much is it to put a new boiler in? You can give a quote back straight away. They might just ask me, how much is it for a brand new website? Well, that's never a straightforward Sorry, question. I don't know how to help with that yet. And even Google doesn't know how to help with that yet. But when people ask, they can then get answers straight away. How do you do it? Well, I'll put a link to the video and you'll be able to see how to do that, how to add a quote button to your Google My Business listing. Now, point number four is to get good reviews. Now, I've got a video that's going to help you to get good reviews and how to ask for reviews as well. So I'll put a link to that video now in the uh, link above. But when you get good reviews, if you can get four or five star reviews and as many of them as you can, you'll notice that they not only show in your listing, but they also show even with an image, which is the most recent release this last few weeks from Google. But also once you've got those listings and you've got those reviews, and you've got that, say, five-star review regularly coming through, people will look through and they'll notice through, so even if you're not in the top three, if they see you've got good reviews and you've got many of them, that's going to encourage people to pick up the phone or to contact you or to use that quote button we mentioned previously. But also another little tip, another little bonus here, is you can actually have those reviews shown on your website. So if you want to know more about that as well, then in that video above now, I'll show you not only how to get more reviews, but how to integrate that into your WordPress website with the Google Reviews widget. So it's an excellent little tool. It looks great when you've got all these reviews and I'm sure you'll find that will benefit your business where you integrate your website and your Google reviews. So hopefully uh, you'll get some good reviews, ask for some good reviews from your clients, and then you can grow and look more authoritative. So the fifth area is we talk about getting into that top three ranking, but how do you know where you rank? I mean, the chances are, if you just look on your own machine, it's going to put you there because it knows that you visit regularly wherever your business is. And it could be that you're sat in your business area. So you're naturally going to be the most local business for that search. So what you really want to do is see, well, how do, do you come up in the search rankings for Google My Business if you were, say, a mile down the road? and someone was searching for your particular service or your product. And that's what this, uh, this video will do now. So I'm going to put a link to this video and it particularly shows you where you rank. Point number six is to add a direction button. Now, when you add a direction button to your website, what it does, is it takes people through to Google My Business listings, but it will do your office or your service or wherever it is that you're listed. It will show that on Google Maps and then on there, it will also show them how to get to your office. So it gives them directions, gives them road directions or how to walk there. But not only is that a good service to your customers, but also it tells Google that you've got another person who's interested in your business. And that gives, again, another kind of signal to Google. And if you have several people looking for your business using the Google directions technique, that will also improve on your rankings and potentially could get you into that top three of Google 
my business listings, which is what you want to do. So that's a really useful tip. That's tip number six. Now, tip number seven is to just continuously add photos. It's been proven that more traffic comes from really smart photos for your business than any other means, really, when it comes to inquiries. So it's in the past often been thought it's about just putting posts on your Google My Business listing. But actually adding photos is essential. Now, what I've done recently is I've shown that not only do you need to add photos, but also you may need to delete photos. And deleting photos can be really tricky sometimes. So there was a, a video which I'll put a link to that just shows you how easy it is to delete videos, and particularly the ones where you can't find the removal or the, the little bin icon. There's still a way to remove those as well. Why would you want to remove uh, videos or why would you want to remove um, uh, photos? Well, because you really want to make sure that the very best are being shown that magnify your business. So you may just want to remove one or two. You may want to remove a few and geotag them even. So that would be a, a sensible way to just cut down and make sure the quality is there, but at the same time to keep updating it on a regular basis. And that will again help you grow within Google My Business and will help improve your rankings. So tip number eight is to not just add images or photos as we've just seen in tip seven, but also to geotag them and to categorize them. So what do we mean by that? Well, if you go to photos, you'll see there's loads of other categories you can add your photo to. So I want you to go through each of your photos and decide, is it internal? Is it external? Is it a shop front? In fact, try and be more descriptive about the photos. Try and think in terms of, of what's going to help your customers when they come to your business. And no doubt Google is going to use those in different ways in the future. But at the moment, you do need to categorize them. So again, in the video about photos and deleting them, I also show at the end a little bonus tip there of how you can categorize them. So if you wanted to see that, have a look at that video and it'll show you how you can do that too. And another thing, of course, another video I have was how to geotag these photos. So if you've taken them on a camera, well, then it will already geotag the GPS of where the photo is taken from. So if it's some photos of, of some business you've done locally, then if you geotagged it, in the area where your business is, then that will tell Google, gives them a signal again, that you're very much the company in the business that you're saying you are in the area and the address that you claim you are. Again, you may think, well, why is that so important? Well, because a lot of the ranking of how Google and your business grows and gets closer to the top of those top three is down to how Google views you. And it views you based on things like geotagging, descriptions, and that type of metadata um, that's categorized with your images as well. So try and just bear in mind, rather than just add photos, try and think in terms of, of letting Google know a bit more about the photo, and then that will give it relevancy in Google's idea of how your business is operating. And here's my final one, my ninth tip to help you if you've already got your business going, but you just want to grow it on Google My Business, and you're wanting some kind of simple tips to do, and that's really to bear this in mind as well. And it's to just think in terms of, have you got the right category for your business? So what you can do is you can look at other businesses and just see what category they come under. So that you'll find that gradually Google is introducing new categories. And it could be that the category you've put your business under doesn't really accurately describe what it is you're doing. So for an example, if, I, if I'm a web designer, then I would expect to be found as my number one primary category as web designer. But for instance, say I, I was more involved in SEO and I put web designer, well then perhaps I should now consider putting SEO or local SEO even, if that's what I'm specializing in. Or if I'm hosting websites, I'd then be known as a hosting company. So the point is, is that we need to just keep checking from time to time, is what we're saying we are exactly what we are? is our primary category the very best category that we represent? And that's really where Google wants us to kind of narrow it down a little bit. Now, the other question you may say regarding categories is how many subcategories should you have? I mean, a while ago, you can have up to 10. Uh, at the moment, I think you can have about five categories in total, so four subcategories and a primary category. But I want you to consider really, unless they're really relevant to you, 
then just have the main primary one and maybe one subcategory that's relevant to you. And then keep checking, making sure that the very latest and the most uh, relevant category is relevant to you. And uh, if it changes, if you find that your competitors are using a different category that's more accurate, well, then make sure that you change as well. And you can check that. There's uh, a couple of videos I've got. One video that shows you just how you can check the primary category, but another one that shows you how you can check the hidden categories because the secondary categories don't get shown naturally. And you can do that by just looking at a little tip where you can go into the code. So again, I'll put a link to that video to help you there. So that's my nine tips for today, but I've got one little bonus for you as well, which uh, before I go, I thought I'd just leave with you as well. And here it is, is what happens if you've just made a bit of a mess up? Maybe you started um, building your Google My Business listing uh, a few years ago. You put some information in, it's not quite right. You've tried to amend it, it's made it a mess. You've made more than two or three amendments. Maybe even someone else has come in and, and put some amendments in because your listing is open to the public to edit as well. What do you then do if you got to the point where you just want to start again? You've got the wrong business name in, you've had the wrong address in the past, everything about it just isn't going right. Is it possible to delete your Google My Business location? Well, it is. And again, I'll show you a, a video that uh, is uh, growing with popularity because uh, obviously there's a lot of people in that situation where they just want to start again. Uh, obviously, when you do delete your Google My Business location, then you have to really literally start again. But sometimes starting again and doing it right from the beginning is often the better way than patching over and patching over and patching over something that's never going to work. Uh, and you don't want Google to be flagging something that continuously looks spammy. So if you really want to do it, the best way would be the honest way. The honest way is to start again sometimes. And so I'll leave that link for you as well that you can follow along as well. So as you'll see with all these tips, they're always honest. They're always trying to do the right thing. Always trying to consider your client as being the most important person. And so if you want to get more of these types of tips, they come out regularly, especially as Google's continuously doing new changes, then make sure you subscribe and I'll hopefully see you on my next video.